on July 3rd, 1987. 18 illegal immigrants were found dead, trapped in a locked, steel-walled boxcar, with temperatures said to be 120 degrees in Sierra Blanca, Texas. Authorities believe that the cause of this incident was a smuggling effort to have these immigrants as illegal workers within the United States. Seven months prior to this incident, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill called the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986, also known as the Simpson-Mazzoli Act, that would change the laws regarding undocumented workers' relations with their employers from that day forward. The act required that employers attest to their employees' immigration status by introducing the I-9 form that all employers must have for every worker, which gave proof of their worker's legal status within the United States. The act also granted amnesty to certain seasonal agricultural workers and to undocumented immigrants who had entered the United States before January 1, 1982, and have continued to live within the United States since that time. Essentially, Employers would now be held accountable for knowing the legal status of their employees, and immigrants who had lived in the states for several years, even those who entered illegally, now had the opportunity to gain the benefits and rights of a U.S. citizen. While this bill could have allowed for a great improvement in the lives of millions of migrants inhabiting the United States, a man horrified by the deaths in Texas named Gary G. Jacobs argued that the introduction of the act by President Reagan did more harm than good. In his letter, Jacob states that, quote, There is a direct correlation between the INS kick an alien while he is down policy and the increase in violent crimes along the United States border. Close quote. The argument that he makes is that, instead of turning away immigrants from the South due to the loss of prospects and finding a job in the United States, it pushes them to accept the services of criminals who are willing to break the law to get them across the border, as was shown by the incident in Sierra Blanca. He also argues that, quote, the vast majority of the Mexican workers in the United States did not want amnesty. They simply wanted self-respect, an honest job, and to move back and forth between their temporary work and their families in Mexico. They didn't come to establish permanent residency. President Reagan's hope was that the Immigration Reform and Control Act would give better protection to the undocumented workers who had been exploited by the employers who took advantage of their legal status. But he failed to see that such a reform act does not reach the root of the problem. Immigration issues need to be faced in a manner that acknowledges the motivations of the immigrants themselves and the dire economic situation faced by their country of origin. In regards to people of Hispanic origin already within the United States who held legal status, a worry was that the Immigration Reform Act would hinder their ability to find jobs since their employers would find it easier to bypass paperwork and legal issues if they simply didn't hire people who looked Hispanic. However, a survey of employers conducted by the United States General Accounting Office reported that the number of Hispanic people of legal status who had been affected negatively by the act when looking for employment was minimal. Although the Immigration Reform and Control Act was not as successful in resolving the immigration issue as we would hope, President Reagan signed the act with the hopes in bettering the lives of the immigrant, which in itself is a huge step forward. Although we still face an even larger immigration issue today, the new focus on the people, rather than the politics, will hopefully one day lead to a solution where no person lives without the rights and privileges that we, as American citizens, are fortunate enough to have.